The little task that you've just done, um, a Ken Ken puzzle, uh, I have been known to give this to students in classes, sometimes just for the lols, like it's just a fun puzzle. And so for the many of you who've never seen one of these before, actually just, I got it sort of inconsistently. Can you please raise your hand if this morning was the first time you've ever seen or attempted one of these before? Hands up straight. I just want to get a quick look. Wow. Wow. Okay, thank you, hands down. All right. So um, these are great. I hope I've just um, introduced you to a world you'll get to enjoy exploring in the future. Um, but there was, this time, a real functional reason why uh, we had to go at this. But that reason will become clearer a little bit later on. So just, um, just file it away for one moment. Congratulations, you made it. 2020 is over. You officially survived. Um, and thank you for all of you being here. You know, 7.30, day one. It's, um, it, it's genuinely appreciated. Day zero, someone, people, some people call it like, is this a real day um, or it is for us? We're starting a new topic today, and um, I hope you're excited about that. To introduce that topic, I have a question for all of you that I want you to actually consider um, at the tables where you are. And I want you to potentially you know, write down some thoughts on this. Maybe just a word or two, a key sentence. Here's the question. You all do a lot of maths. Like you spend a significant amount of time studying this subject. Um, but you also study other subjects. Obviously you all study English. Um, several of you study sciences or some of the um, you know, HSIE subjects. The thing that I want to pose to all of you right now the question I'd love you to, I'm going to give you a couple of minutes to discuss it is, what is it about this subject that makes it unique? Like, what is it that makes mathematics as a discipline special? Now, I'm going to anticipate your first answer. Maybe it's not your first answer. Maybe this is just me being like a bit pessimistic. But I'm going to anticipate your first answer and tell you um, that it's not true and why. Some of you are going to say mathematics is the subject of numbers, right? That, I think that's where it starts. Like you can start doing calculations and arithmetic and then algebra and all the rest. Can someone tell me why numbers are not the thing that makes mathematics unique? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, it's all about space. Oh, okay, so number one, there are other things included. Like that's not the only thing. Um, that's true, but I want you to, like I'm trying to make a point of comparison with the other subjects. Like just think for a second, especially if you're a science student, but really in any of the other subjects, why is it that mathematics can't claim numbers as its unique thing? Come on, it's not a, it's not a rhetorical question. It's a really, like, don't, don't overthink it. It's a really obvious answer. Numbers exist in sciences as well, but mathematics is about problem solving. Ooh, okay, so you're starting to get into the, what I'm going to ask you to discuss, but you've gotten to the heart of it, right? Sure, we're, we love numbers and we're surrounded by it, but literally every other subject. Even a subject like English, if you studied rhythm and rhyme and poetry, every other subject has numbers too. So numbers are not the thing that makes mathematics unique. I'm going to give you a couple minutes to have a think, turn, write something down, anything, and then we'll come back and discuss. <laughs> All right, so uh, we, could, we could play this game for quite some time, uh, which I hope you've been enjoying. I've been, a, I've been slightly unfair um, in that there are many, many different answers to this question that are all valid, but I'd love to hear, as succinct as you can, maybe a word or a short sentence, uh, what are your takes on this? Varun, can I put you on the spot? You've got several answers, actually, which is part of why I'm putting you on the spot. P give us one. Give us one. It's universal. It's universal. Can you, even though I asked for a short answer, can you unpack what you mean by mathematics is universal? Um, I don't know, even if you're like, some different alien species, right? People like send them, they send out the, um, the beaten things, that's <laughs> what they're called. They, they give a uh, binary and uh, what is it, our, our counting system mm -hmm. so that other species, if they exist, will know, hey, they can count too. So it's a thing that every species can do. Yeah, nice. <laughs> I, I really like that. So you're thinking of um, potentially, um, I don't know if you guys know this because it's a long time ago. Uh, the Voyager space probes. So the Voy Voyager 1, or it's, I don't know if it's 1 or 2, but it's the fastest moving human object in history because it's just been accelerating out of the solar system for decades at the moment. And on it, there are these, uh, this kind of record of if some alien happens upon these things, what can we show to communicate? We have intelligence and that kind of thing. And a lot of it is mathematics. Now, it is worth pointing out, there's some other cultural stuff on there. There's like music, there's you know, written language. But as Fairley pointed out, those are not 
universal, um, even within our own planet, right? You go to another country and it's like, I can't read that. English? What is that? That's not universal to me. Someone want to give us a very different answer. Who's got something else? Here you go, Hija. Oh, it's strictly logical. It's strictly logical? What do you mean oh, by that? Oh, okay. So, like, we have like equations got to be A equals to B, B equals to C, then therefore A equals to C, uh, mm -hmm. something like that. There's no, you know, there's no guesses in math. Huh. Uh, like, no guesses in math. math. But we can't really use it for proper mathematics. Yeah, okay, sure. All right, so there's, there's a lot of interesting ideas there, Zhao, that, you know, there's this idea of logic that um, we don't guess. Uh, we can sort of string together an argument that's uh, quite different to other arguments in other subjects, right? Um, I'll return to that idea. Does anyone want to give one last suggestion? Someone had something different to either of those ideas? Anyone? Keep thinking, please. As promised, there are many other good answers to this, but um, I'm actually going to take uh, Zhao's as a, um, a touch point because I think it sort of gets to what is special about this topic that we're about to introduce today um, and the angle on maths that I want to take, okay? Uh, in all your different subjects, you learn stuff, right? Like, that's kind of the point. Like I learn about texts in English, I learn about periods of history, or I learn about how biology works, etc. right? So you gain knowledge and skills, but, and this is the important idea, the nature of how we know things in mathematics is completely different and unique among all of the different subjects. There's a way in which every other subject is the same and mathematics kind of stands off on its own. So to give you a sense of what I mean by that, I'm just going to give you a bit of a comparison, right? Hands up, who studies the science? It's, it's almost all of you, isn't it? It's almost all of you. Okay, thank you, hands down. So, not a rhetorical question. How do we know things are true? How do we know what is reality in science? What's the method that we use? Experiments. We use experiments. Yeah, we use experiments. When we experiment, what do we... Like, if you experimented once and said, oh, look, this thing happens, is that enough to know something is true in science? It's not, right? What do we have to do after that? Yeah, we have to... Um, there's this idea called repeatability, right? Uh, uh, we can actually get that result and get it over and over again. We can get under different situations, circumstances, and so on. So we observe... We experiment, and we, importantly, we do it over and over again. So the Large Hadron Collider, I don't know who the physics students are, right? One of the big things behind it is it's not just colliding particles together, hadrons, protons, etc., real fast. It's doing it millions of times per second so that we can know with great confidence this doesn't just happen once or a thousand times or a million times. Uh, it happens, you know, orders of magnitude more. And that's how we know things are true in science. But you can't do that in history, can you? Right? You can't, by its nature, you can't repeat things in history. So, how do we know things? You still, we can still establish that things are reality historically. How do we do it, though? We don't do it by experimentation at all. Xiao, you've given us a good thought already, so I wonder if anyone else is willing to share. Record. Record? So, we, I mean, I kind of gave you a bit of a clue, right? We look at, we, we generally call them sources. Do you remember that's a special name, right? Um, and then we analyze those sources, and those are often like, archaeological records or, or written things and we try and come up with a story, a narrative that makes sense of all those different sources, right? Like, because sources often disagree, but we can look at all of them together and say, well, even though they have different perspectives, we can come up with one picture that makes sense of all the different ones, okay? All right, so now, this is where we get into the heart of things, right? In mathematics, it's not enough to just have, like, how do, we true, how do we prove that, say, Pythagoras' theorem was true? How do we know it was true? Answer, we did not just draw lots and lots of triangles and measure hypotenuses and all that kind of thing. We, that wouldn't have been enough. You could have a billion triangles and say, oh, it's all true, but that would not be enough in mathematical terms. Um, we don't trust sources either. I mean, we do have sources. But that's not the reason why we're like, oh, some guy, Isaac Newton wrote this down one time, so we're like, he seems legit. That's not how we do it in maths. How do we do it? Zhao actually had the word, right? What was the word? Starts with an L? Uh, logic. It's logic, right? Um, importantly, it's deductive logic, like Sherlock Holmes type stuff, right? If this is true, then this is true. And if that's true, then this is true. And you've been doing this for years and years and years, right? Now, importantly, and this is why I gave you that task, right? This is how, even if you couldn't articulate it, this is how you solve the Ken-Ken, right? Have a think about, for example, 
Uh, let's look at that blue cage. You can see it. You've probably, it was probably one of the first ones you filled in, is my guess, right? Uh, we knew we only had the numbers one, two, three, and four to play with, right? But you pretty quickly determined what were the numbers that went in there from left to right? It's a three, and then a one, and then a three, yeah? Now, how did you know? How did you know that it had to be a three, one, and a three? Any takers? Come on, have a look. I, I know most of you have it written. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, that's right. So we could, because we've got very few combinations, you can actually just process in your mind. You're like, I've got one, two, three, and four, right? The two and the four are, are duds, aren't they? Because they're even numbers, and nine's an odd number. When you multiply even numbers, you'll get more even numbers. So you're like, I've only got the, the one and the three to play with. But then you knew their position, right? How did I know it couldn't be like one, three, three, for instance? Yeah, then, then they're in a column or, or they're in a row. So that's how you know they're separated out, right? So you, can you see the mechanics of how we're thinking this through? We're employing deductive logic. Now, deductive logic is really, really special because unlike scientific and historical knowledge, it's timeless. That there's not going to be someone who comes along and does an experiment one day and it's like, oh, actually, we, got, we had better instruments, so we learned that it wasn't a 313 because we we're like, oh, we can, we can see better now. Our experimentation is better quality. We do this in science all the time. That's kind of the point, right? It's like, oh, we thought an atom looked like this. We thought it was like plum pudding. And then we thought it was like a, a solar system with things orbiting around. And then we're like, no, those are wrong. We have better instruments now, right? But this doesn't happen in mathematics. Things are logically true, so they're timelessly true. Does this make sense? And this deductive logic is what we're going to go through in our new topic this term. Uh, it's called the nature of proof. Uh, this is the code in the syllabus because we've encouraged you guys to, to look at the syllabus and go through it as we go through it. Uh, it's a much shorter topic than complex numbers. Uh, actually, the complex numbers we did last term were kind of two different topics that we sort of jammed together. Um, but even though it's a short topic, I think you're going to find it is dramatically different to every other thing you've done in mathematics, even though it's, it's right at the core of it. Okay? So, to uh, get your hands dirty, because okay, I've already been talking to you uncomfortably long, I'm going to give you an example of the kind of thing we're going to be wrestling with in this topic. Okay? And this is a very classic kind of puzzle that you're going to spend uh, five or ten minutes doing, okay? depending on how quickly you solve it. So there's this island. Okay? I mean, you may like to jot some of this down, by the way, because I haven't given you a piece of paper for it. Um, there's this island, and there are only two kinds of people on this island. Liars, truth tellers. Liars lie, truth tellers tell truth. Okay? So there's the setup, and then you meet three people, and they say these things to you. I'm not going to read them out because you can read them out yourselves. The question to all of you, um, and I'm going to invite you to spend some time on this first, just in the quiet of your own brain. So we're going to have a silent room for a minute or two. And then I'm going to get you to work together. The question for all of you is, on this evidence and this setup, who's who? Who's lying? Who's telling the truth? You've, you've seen, you've heard of puzzles like this before, right? Lateral thinking puzzles. One or two minutes. I'll give you a heads up and I'll let you know. Can I ask you to jot down a few things? See if you can unravel who is who and what's going on here. And then I'll prompt you to then compare thoughts and um, start arguing with each other. Off you go.